Hi, Capture 20 is finally here, and despite the provocative naming, Capture 20 is an evolutionary style upgrade with a mass of long awaited features. New HDR tool with white and black sliders, improved noise reduction, reworked crop tool, improved copying of layers. Nevertheless, Capture 20 experiments with novel approaches to image editing as well. For instance, you can now adjust color simply by moving cursor over an image. For new users, Capture 20 delivers a new scrollable interface and improved image calling to make switching to Capture even easier. Plus, in Capture 20, developers enhanced processing for DNG files from your phones, drones, and non supported cameras. Download Capture 20, as always, it has a 30 days free trial, and let's find out how all the new features work. First things first, Capture 20 has now a scrollable interface. Part of Capture One users have been asking for tool scrolling for years. However, some photographers were always against any changes in Capture One UI. In Capture One 20, developers somehow managed to please both sides. So, here is how it works now. You have two sections in each tool tab. Paint area. There is no scroll bar in the paint area. All tools located there work just as they did before. Scrollable area. You can place any tool here and quickly scroll through this section using a scroll wheel. Tools can be easily moved between areas by drag and dropping or by clicking this icon and choosing to move a tool. Thus, you can have any tool tab set up you want. You can place all the tools in the pinned area and have a classical Capture One interface. Likewise, you can move all the tools in the scrollable area and have a Lightroom-style interface. However, I would suggest having the best of both worlds. In my case, I have set color channel curves in a scrollable section below the pinned RGB curve. By default, the scroll wheel is now used for two-tap scrolling and thus you can't adjust sliders with it anymore. There are two solutions to this. You can use Alt Scroll to adjust sliders, or you can set Alt Scrolling for Tool tab in Capture on Preferences and have a classical setup. I think new scrollable tools fit perfectly into Capture's approach to the customizable interface. Also, you can now quickly switch the viewer background color by right-clicking the background itself or by using shortcuts. So, it's time to discuss new editing features. HDR tool in Capture on 20 has been entirely rebuilt. Firstly, all sliders now have positive and negative values. Thus, you can easily make highlights brighter and shadows darker. It gives you additional control over image contrast. Secondly, in Caption 20 you will find new white and black sliders to adjust the darkest shadows and brightest highlights precisely. For example, you can easily recover the darkest parts of your image without affecting regular dark areas. It works the same way for the brightest highlights. Here I have recovered them without ruining regular bright areas. At first, you might think that the new HDR sliders work similarly to Lightroom sliders, but they are quite different. White and black sliders in Lightroom basically adjust white and black points on your image. Capture One has a separate and much more powerful tool for this – Levels. As you can see, white and black sliders in Capture One are not repeating levels. If you have no dark or bright information on an image, you need to work with levels first. Another interesting feature. The new HDR sliders work excellently while being mixed. For instance, you can darken highlights and brighten white areas to make an image look deeper. Likewise, you can dim shadows but recover black parts and get more details out of them. HDR tool in Capture One 20 deserves a separate video. Subscribe to my newsletter to be first to know when it's going to be released. Plus, you'll get my free guide to Capture One and a set of free styles for Capture One. Another significant change in Capture One 20 is the new Basic Color Editor. The new Basic Color Editor has no color wheel and thus takes much less space in a tool tab. 
Instead of color wheel, basic mode now contains 8 prepared color segments with standard sliders – hue, saturation and lightness. Plus, you can easily customize color ranges by clicking here. If you miss View Selected Color Range tool, don't forget that you can set it to a shortcut. Also, Basic Color Editor now fully supports layers. Apart from visual changes, Basic Color Editor now offers an entirely new way of color correction. Direct Color Editor is a new cursor tool that gives you full control over color editing. You can select Direct Color Editor in Basic Color Editor window, in Toolbar menu or simply by using a shortcut D. When Direct Color Editor is active, click any color on an image, hold down the left mouse button and move your cursor. Vertical movements adjust saturation of selected color. Horizontal movements change hue. Alt plus horizontal movements adjust lightness. In Direct Color Editor settings, right-click with an active tool, you can adjust sensitivity and customize controls. At first, such direct control over color feels off-bit, like you're working blindfolded. Give it some time and you will notice that you're making more and more corrections with Direct Color Editor. This simplicity and quickness suit basic color editing just naturally. So, try it in your workflow and we're moving to the next feature of Caption 20 – the new Crop tool. Crop area has got noticeable bold handles. Now it's much easier to grab and resize the crop. Also, you can now hold down the Alt key while cropping to crop around the center. Freehand rotation can now be activated by moving the cursor outside the corner of the crop or by using Command or Control keys. Plus, you can now use Enter key to switch to Pan Cursor tool quickly. Ok, what about better noise reduction which I have mentioned at the beginning of the video? Don't forget to upgrade your file engine to see the new Caption 20 processing on your images. When I have just tried Caption 20, I've been a bit skeptical regarding the new noise reduction. At first glance, it works pretty similarly to Caption 12 algorithms. To change your mind, you need to look at how Caption 20 deals with color rendering in shadows and highlights. Caption 20 preserves many more details now. Moreover, according to developers, noise reduction works intelligently in Caption 20. The default noise reduction adjustments are now based on your ISO, thus you can get a correct result without manual tweaking of noise reduction. Now it's time to discuss a pretty minor update, but it has been anticipated by so many of my followers that I just can't put it at the end of my list. Caption 20 brings a simple but enormously useful tool for image calling – Select Next When. It allows you to switch to the next image automatically once you set a rating or a color tag onto your image. Ok, moving to the next big update. Caption 20 now offers better color profiling for DNG files from drones, smartphones and cameras that use DNG format. In Caption 20 you will find a new base curve. DNG standard. If you haven't experienced any issues with color of your DNG files previously, you will see only the slightest changes in Caption 20. For instance, DNG from iPhone 10 or the first DJI Mavic look pretty similar in Caption 12 and Caption 20. However, if you weren't satisfied with color of your DNG in Caption 12, you might find color rendering significantly better with the new DNG standard curve. I have tested images from DJI Mavic 2 Pro and the new curve delivers way more natural colors. Now to another update from Caption user's wishlist. There are three major improvements to the copying of layers in Caption 20. First of all, you can now select which layers to copy. Say you have different layers for color editing, exposure correcting and image retouching. In Caption 20 you can easily copy color and exposure layers without copying retouch layer. Secondly, if you already have some layers on an image, new layers will be added on top of the existing layers. 
The third improvement enhances copying for images from different cameras. Previously, you might have had issues of copying layers from a file taken with one camera to an image from another camera. In Capture on 20, developers have fixed this problem and now you can easily copy layers to images with different dimensions. If you have found my Capture on 20 review useful, there is a simple way to support my work and it will cost you nothing. Just use this code at Capture on Checkout. Alex on Raw. Capture on 20 contains a number of other minor changes like adjustment clipboard improvements and new shortcuts. You will find a full list of all the Caption 20 updates on my blog, alexonraw.com. Plus, there are dozens of Caption tutorials waiting for you. Are you aware that you can set shortcuts for Caption styles? I have the whole article about this.